Okay, the, now, the time is now 7 o'clock. I'd like to uh, call the meeting in order. If you could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Mr. Tamarkin. All right, thank you very much. Clerk, please call the roll. Greenberg. Here. Hicks. Here. Mako. Here. Shapaka. Here. Siriano. Here. Tamarkin. Here. And Pollier is absent. Okay, thank you. Next item on the agenda, additions or corrections to the agenda. I didn't see any, so yes, we'll move on to the next agenda item, approval of minutes. Do we have a uh, motion to approve the minutes from March 13th, 2024? So moved by Hicks. We have a motion by Mr. Hicks. Do we have a second? Second, Greenberg. We have a second by Mr. Greenberg. Any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Hicks? Yes. Greenberg? Yes. Mako? Yes. Shapaka? Seriano? Yes. Tamarkin? Yes. Motion passes. Next agenda item, swearing in of applicants and speaker. I will turn it over to City Attorney, Mr. Roth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We are now at the public hearing portion of the meeting. The public hearing will operate as follows. Administrative staff will make a presentation or comment on the application. The applicant or their representative may then make a presentation or comment on the application. The applicant has 10 minutes to present an additional time may be requested. Permission is at the discretion of the chair. Public comment will then be open for three minutes allowed per speaker. Additional time may be requested. Permission is at the discretion of the chair. Speakers must complete a speaker slip and come to the podium and state their name and address. The applicant will then be given 10 minutes to comment. Additional time may be requested. Permission is at the discretion of the chair. If there is more than one application pending for a particular address, the presentation on each application may be consolidated and presented as one. At this time, will persons wishing to present testimony this evening please rise and raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are, you are about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, state I do. Thank you, Mr. Roth. Next agenda item is gonna be applications and public comment. We have one agenda item for applications, 825 Tech Center Drive. And there are three cases uh, tonight. And I will read them into the record. We have a variance, a final development plan, and a design review. So we'll start with the variance. It's case V-0005-2024 to consider a variance application of very chapter sections 1155.04b, 2c, side yard, section 1155.05a, 3a, side architecture materiality, one, one, section 1155.05c, 1a, window percentage, section 1163, Point zero eight B and one one six three point zero eight E interior landscape and requirements and section one one six three point zero two A parking requirements of the codified ordinances of the city of Gahanna for property located at eight twenty five Tech Center Drive, parcel ID zero two five dash zero one one five three six and zero two five dash zero one three six zero zero current zoning. OCT, City, City of Gahanna Civic Center, Keith Hall applicant. Next we have a final development plan, FDP-0004-2024 to consider a final development plan application for property located at 825 Tech Center Drive, parcel IDs 025-011536 and parcel ID 025-013600. Current zoning OCT, City of Gahanna Civic Center, Keith Hall applicant. And then finally, a design review application, and that's case number DR-0005-2024 to consider design review application 
for a site plan, landscaping, and building design for property located at 825 Tech Center Drive, parcel IDs 025-011536 and 025-13600, current zoning, OCT, City of Gahanna Civic Center, Keith Hall, applicant. I'll now turn it over to the administration for a presentation. Mr. Blackford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On your screen is the location and zoning map. Properties at 825 Tech Center. Here is Tech Center Drive in this location. 270, just to the west. All the properties in light gray that you see on your screen are zoned OCT, Office Commerce Technology, the same zoning as the subject property. Just uh, adjacent and to the uh, southwest is zoned PID, which is Planned Industrial Development, and that is the same uses as OCT. So tonight we do have three applications, a final development plan, design review, and some various requests. For the redevelopment of 825, the site is currently vacant for the new site of the City of Gahanna Civic Center. Thought it might be helpful to put a little bit of, of context into the proposed site with the existing um, City Hall site. Uh, so it is about an acre and a half increase uh, in property size. Uh, the building is more than double in size. There, there has been several or a couple of different uh, uh, space analysis done and uh, was identified uh, multiple times that the city does need this additional square footage. Uh, parking is increasing by, uh, let's round up and call it 150 spaces as well. Uh, but as you see, sort of at the top of that chart there, that the uses are staying the same. So city hall activities, public meetings, permitting, utility bills, things of that nature, those activities are moving uh, to 825 as are police activities and the senior center. So again, all the activities you see on site here are moving to the, the new property. It is zoned OCT, office uses, government office uses are allowed by right. In case you're curious with the uh, pending zoning code rewrite, uh, this area would be designated IM, Innovative and Manufacturing, and the same uses would be allowed. Uh, the current uh, site, like I said, is it's developed with an office building. We'll take a look at that here shortly, but it's been vacant since about uh, 2021. Uh, there is about 44,000 square feet of additional building size. However, that development footprint is largely staying the same. It's not um, altered very much. So if we were to look at the site today, which we will here momentarily, where we see parking and building is really where, you know, parking and building will maintain. So it's not really increasing the development footprint. In fact, I believe the impervious surface ratio uh, was only increasing by like a, a thousand square feet of impervious. So again, the development footprint is largely the same, even though the building is increasing. Uh, sp parking spaces uh, are decreasing by 149. Uh, a lot of buildings built in this time period, this was late 90s, parking was king. Uh, I believe it's about 190 square feet of, of office space per one parking space. Uh, ratios have changed over the years. This is still um, uh, about one per 390 square feet. And even with all the increased uh, building size, uh, changes to the parking area, there's still significant amount of landscaping that's being added, um, about 88 trees in total. So I alluded to the uh, changing nature of this area, Tech Center Drive and development in this area. Here's a street view image of the property in 2015. Uh, there are multiple users at this time, and there's a sign up in the corner here that says the Everest Institute uh, College there that was operating primarily on the first floor. Even though those 518 parking spaces on site, you can see that there's only a few empty spaces. If we transition, transition to 2019, uh, Everest Institute was out. However, there were several office users. One of them was a large call center that the city actually had an office in uh, incentive tax abatement, or uh, tax incentive on, uh, again, large employer. Know if you fast forward one more, 2021 here, you can see that just the changing dynamics. Obviously the office uh, market was hit hard by, by COVID. This property and several others in the area are no exception. Uh, but with that, that was presented to the city with an opportunity to acquire a piece of property that normally they wouldn't have had an opportunity to do so. Here is the, the final development plan. 
Um, two access points on the Tech Center Drive on the north side of the property. These are existing. They're not proposed to be relocated. One large parking area. Again, this is sort of where an existing parking area is located. This is the primary uh, location for guest parking. To the south here, you'll see another parking area. This is a gated parking area for police. And you can see that they have interconnectivity with the adjacent property, AEP. There's an agreement in, in place there. And then we have sort of our third parking area in this location. This is largely unchanged in the area and configuration. I think about the only thing that's changing is the addition of some uh, security gate here, uh, relocation of a, a dumpster from this area to there. I mentioned about 44,000 square feet of additional space. Uh, there is a, a, a basement, um, but here in, in blue you can see the approximate areas of where the additions are occurring. The front facade is being extended out towards Tech Center. There's also two large wings. This wing is uh, for police operations. This one is for senior center operations. I'm going to focus here a little bit on design. Um, unfortunately, some of these uh, areas don't show up really well, but I think what's interesting about um, this particular area is that essentially most of these properties in this area, just so we know, here is 825. If we look at the development of the adjacent properties here, here is the adjacent property. You can see by the look, it is essentially the exact same building. All these properties were developed by the same folks around the same time period. So there's a, an existing development character in that area. And I think the design uh, of the building was trying to be respectful of that existing design character with also um, uh, uh, creating a, um, a, a civic <laughs> facility that stood out as well. But again, here's the adjacent property to the west, AEP. Here's two properties along Morrison. Again, very similar in design, in materials, and look. So this is 825. This is currently how it, how it looks. This is the proposed facade here. This is the main facade, the facade that um, is most visible from Tech Center Drive. You can see the addition, the, the front here. Obviously, it's a very dramatic uh, transformation here. We have wings on uh, the left and right of the screen. The materials here is, is stone. Uh, it's trying to complement the existing uh, brick. Uh, similar material, uh, similar compatible color. Obviously, a significant amount of, of glass here to allow natural light into the building. Uh, actually, this will require a variance, which we'll cover here shortly. It's actually too much glass uh, than what the code allows for. And again, similar wing on the, on the side here, the other end of the building here where police activities, again, this is stone to complement the existing brick. Here in the, the left, top left of your screen here, this is a, another facade that's visible from 825, I'm sorry, from Tech Center. This is as you're traveling westbound, you can see this area. Right here, this is the rear of the building. Uh, this area is proposed uh, not to change. Uh, this is what that would look like here. But then you can see here on the end of the building, in this area, you'll see this is where this wing right here, the senior center, this is where uh, we'll have the, the stone addition. And in this area is where the uh, glass curtain wall would be located. But again, this area is, is not changing in the rear of the building. For those of you who like variances, you're going to enjoy the next several minutes because there's six of them. Uh, these two on the screen right now are related to design. Um, the design of the building does require a couple of variances. I would point out that zoning code is typically written for new development, not so much uh, alterations and additions. And taking that into consideration, uh, the first code section here uh, requires four-sided architecture. So your side and rear elevations have to be of a similar materials and similar uh, amount of details as that main facade. As we were just speaking about, uh, as I mentioned, the rear facade, it's brick, it's not proposing to change. Where the front facade, we have the addition of a significant amount of glass, and those side facades have a significant amount of, of stone. So there is a little variation in materials and uh, the amount of fenestration, so that does technically require a, a variance. 
Uh, we do believe that, um, or I believe that the, the design intent is met. Uh, again, I, I think, um, you know, when we require four-sided architecture, it's really to ensure that we don't have blank canvases, ugly sort of blank facades, and that we're using quality materials. This building is, is primarily brick, stone, and, and glass. So again, this is not maybe vinyl or ugly, you know, concrete block construction. So we do believe that four-sided architecture, the intent is met. Same with the windows, uh, front facade, 40 to 60% uh, window openings. Uh, there's greater than that proposed on the, the front facade. And the uh, secondary facades have less than the minimum 30% requirement. And very challenging to meet when you're not uh, renovating a, the rear sections of a 25-year-old building. They don't require renovation. The building was built before this code section was was uh, created, so again, that rear facade doesn't meet the, the 30 percent, and the front facade has greater than 60 percent. Again, uh, we believe the intent of the code is met. It's a it's a beautiful building. It improves the design uh, element there, the existing design of the district. Uh, so we do believe the intent is is met. And I would just point out that with with both of these uh, variances, those existing buildings we just looked at uh, wouldn't meet these requirements. Uh, we're not done with variances. We have several more. Uh, this one is 10-yard setback, uh, side yard setback. It only applies to one area, uh, one minor improvement. This is Tech Center Drive that we were just looking at. This is the uh, easternmost access point. This would be where the Senior Center addition is. Oop. And right there, that is the dumpster. The dumpster is approximately five feet into the side yard setback. Um, the dumpster originally was towards the south of the property, but right here in this location, this is where some security gates are proposed. So not a good idea to have the dumpster behind there. And as you can see, I think uh, the, the thought process was that, that this is the uh, best location for ease of getting in and out of the dumpster for those large vehicles. So what is this adjacent property? How would we possibly be affecting this adjacent property? Well, right here towards the top of the screen, the adjacent parcel, this is a, a drainage retention area for Tech Center Drive. Uh, this area is very um, limited width. Uh, no development could occur in this area other than perhaps a, a drive for the uh, parcel to the south here. So staff's opinion is that provided this location, it wouldn't negatively affect any adjacent properties. Parking? Maybe? Well, <laughs> well, take my word. So uh, there is a parking variance required. Oh, there it goes. Uh, the code requires one space uh, for office uses, one space for every 350 square feet. They are proposing one space for every 390 square feet. Uh, that is 149 more spaces than we have at, at City Hall. By my accounts, uh, the property here between City Hall uh, police and senior center, there's 220 spaces. Um, those of you who, who don't have the pleasure of coming here during daytime might not realize the, the challenges that exist in this parking lot. Uh, parking is at a premium. Um, so even though there is a, a parking variance requested, I've never been as confident as I am in saying in this particular variance that there would not be any adverse impact. Uh, we need the additional parking, very confident in that the 149 additional spaces are more than adequate uh, to address the public, police, and, and city staff needs. Uh, the second variance here is uh, to the minimum of tree caliper size. Code says that parking lot to landscaping has to be a minimum of three caliper inches. Also says you have to plant those within those parking aisles, islands. Um, and they are requesting one and a half caliper inches and to park, uh, sorry, to plant some of those uh, trees uh, adjacent to the parking area. There's a lot of landscaping proposed and to the entrance of the building and so to spread out the parking, uh, sorry, the plantings um, because there isn't sufficient room in the parking lot. I can tell you that our park staff, they reviewed this request. They have no uh, objections to the reduced caliper size or to the, uh, uh, they're actually in favor of, of spreading out the area where those 88 trees will be planted. Final, final variance, I hope. Uh, this is to parking lot screening. This is the code section that says when you have a parking lot adjacent to the right of way, you have to provide a three foot tall landscaping or, or wall. 
So this is Tech Center Drive. This is the location of where the parking lot screening would normally be provided. Um, <clears throat> there really isn't sufficient room because uh, this project is adding a sidewalk on Tech Center Drive. Uh, there's one on the north side, but there isn't one on the south side. So I believe that's six feet wide. And then there's also some bio retention proposed in that area. Uh, so there really isn't sufficient space to, to provide plantings in that area. Uh, the amount of parking that actually faces Tech Center Drive is, is reduced than what is currently out there. And this site and uh, all the adjacent properties do not have this uh, screening requirement. So granting the variance would really just allow it to, uh, the, that tree lawn area to, for the most part, remain the same. Um, again, it would have the bioswale and it would have uh, the sidewalk, but it wouldn't have the screening. So, again, uh, staff would not object to, to that request. The three criteria to consider uh, with the variance, are there special circumstances or conditions applying to the land, building, or, or use? Granting the variance necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of <coughs> property rights, but granting the application be detrimental to, to the adjacent surrounding properties. I would argue that, especially when it comes to design and some of those uh, types of variances that rather than being detrimental would actually be beneficial to the area, uh, improves the design character, uh, the reduction in parking, no issues, uh, still more than, um, substantially more than we have currently. And again, even with the landscaping, it's just keeping in character with the properties there. Design review criteria, compatibility with existing structures. Again, the design concept here was to be respectful to that, that existing design character of the corridor, uh, but also differentiate this building since there is so much similarities and have it uh, uh, stand out as the uh, home of Gahanna, the Civic Center. Contribute to the economic community vitality of the district. Absolutely, this project 100% does that, certainly. You know, obviously this community facility, this is in an area here of Tech Center in Morrison where there's underutilized properties that are needing in, of redevelopment. Final development plan criteria, this absolutely meets uh, know, appropriate plans for the area. The land use plan specifically calls out and, and encourages uh, office uses in this area. Um, it does meet all the applicable development standards except for a, a couple of variances. And we absolutely find it consistent with the land use character and development of the area. Again, this particular area, more than any other part of the city, it's primarily developed with office, and we're continuing that trend. Staff does recommend approval of the request as submitted. Again, the use is allowed by right. No conditional use, no rezoning. Um, as we just stated, uh, stated it's, use is consistent with surrounding developments. You know, those are, this is the type of activity we're encouraging. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had the Burns and Scallo office in Industrial, which is just up the road, uh, tech center from here. So again, it's you know an office user, uh, more office users. Uh, absolutely believe that the design of this project improves the aesthetics of, of the area. Uh, variances, we believe that are necessary due to the scope of the project. It's very difficult for alterations or additions to meet everything in the code because you're not starting from scratch. Uh, so I think it's important to understand, are they, are they meeting the intent of the code requirements? We absolutely believe they will or do. Again, similar variances have been granted. None of the variances being requested here tonight are really very different than the majority of our other projects within OCT, uh, whether it's Burns and Scallo or uh, I know there was the landscape company on Taylor Road, uh, very similar variances requested. So with that, Mr. Chair, I will turn it back over to your capable hands. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blackford. We will now open public comment. Is the applicant here who would like to comment? Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's unusual to see all of you from this perspective. You look a little bit more intimidating than you do when I'm usually sitting over there. Uh, but we are very excited to be here uh, before you this evening as we enter what is hopefully the final stages of the design and planning section uh, of this very major project. Uh, I don't need to tell you that the... Yes, sir. Your name oh my goodness, my name is Laurie Jadwin. I'm the mayor of the city of Gahanna. My address is 200 South Hamilton Road more often than not. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shapaka. I do apologize for that. 
Uh, the, the work that you're seeing tonight, the, the work that Mr. Uh, Director Blackford has just presented to you is 15 months plus in the making. Uh, I don't need to tell you this is a significant project, not only for the city, but for our residents. Uh, this building, 825 Tech Center Drive, is a building for the people. Uh, once completed, once we're able to move in there, it will have a direct impact on our delivery of uh, services, our operations for the residents of this city. Uh, it will improve our efficiencies. Uh, certainly streamline our operations, but it will also set us up for success for the next 30 plus years, uh, much longer than I will be here for sure. Uh, the project, uh, as you know, really addresses three facility needs in one. Uh, our police headquarters, our city hall operations, as well as our senior center. Uh, and it is the largest capital investment, uh, I believe, in the city's history. It's important to us that we are here tonight because, uh, quite frankly, we have one shot at this. We want to get it right. Uh, it's important to us that we are transparent, uh, and it's important to us that we have your input and your approval before we move forward on this project and that we take any further steps. Uh, this is not the first time you've seen this project. We did have a workshop with you um, sometime last year. Uh, it is largely the same. Uh, however, I am now going to turn the microphone over uh, to Director Kevin Schultz. He has been the pro lead project manager, uh, has been dreaming about 825 for the last 20-some months. Uh, also with me this evening, our senior director, Miranda Vollmer, uh, who has been working very closely with Director Schultz, uh, as well as members of our team from MSA. So, Director Schultz. So, yeah, um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Kevin Schultz. Uh, I think my address is also 200 South Hamilton. Uh, but yeah, the, basically what the, the team that you're looking at, uh, uh, up to and including Mr. Blackford, who gave a wonderful presentation a couple minutes ago, is largely the design team uh, that was assembled, uh, again, about that 15 months ago in order to uh, begin the design work that you guys are seeing tonight. Uh, again, not for the first time, uh, but in its, in its final form. Uh, two other people that aren't, aren't here, uh, Stephanie Farrell, the Parks and Recreation Director, and then Amanda, Amanda Parker, the, the court clerk, uh, also serve on, on our team. Uh, Mr. Hall uh, and, and uh, Santiago are here uh, from MSA uh, for any very specific design questions that obviously uh, they can answer that I can't. But uh, the one slide that I would actually like to go over is, is probably just more process, right? But when, when MSA was brought on board in order to begin to design this, uh, this facility, uh, we really established 10 different goals uh, for the project to make sure that it was inviting and approachable as, as a facility to create that clear civic presence so that when you approach the building of this stature that you knew that you were coming to do the government's business and not uh, not business with AEP as, as an example that, that Mr. Blackford pointed out. Um, but make it community and, and service focused, right? So uh, with the addition of that multi-use trail on the front side of the property and then a trailhead, right? It really is a seven day a week type facility as opposed to just a, uh, a five day a week facility that, that, that as an example, this one is obviously police is obviously a different function that's 24 seven function. Um, but allow for future expansion. Uh, make it safe and secure, right? I think the internal components of the of the facility and then a lot of the site improvements that, uh, whether it be secure PD parking and secure staff parking, uh, but then other features internal to the building that uh, aren't necessarily reviewed tonight, I think accomplish those things very well. Uh, meet the additional and renovated uh, square foot footage goals. I do believe that we are right on the number. I don't need, know that we could have got any closer to a number that was established uh, by Pizzuti a number of years ago at this particular point in time uh, with this and obviously meet the programming goals for each one of the departments. Uh, and then the last two, uh, uh, rebranding and then, and then making that unique identi uh, identity uh, of the facility but then also, also uh, improving the quality of spaces uh, from traditional architecture like this particular building, but then uh, modernizing that particular building in the way in which things are organized and, and improving daylighting and other, and other such qualities. Uh, just from a process standpoint, obviously we've been in front of you folks before, uh, but we've given a number of presentations to like the Chief Civic Association. We've been to the Senior Center a number of times discussing the design with them. Uh, but then we've given, um, I guess the word countless comes to mind, but countless presentations to the City Council as it relates to this particular project. I'd be remiss to say that um, Elford is our construction management team and they are a phenomenal group to, to be uh, on this team to, to actually build the project. 
Uh, and then I also need to recognize our friends at Baker Tilly who have helped with the bonding and other such uh, financial matters as it relates to this particular building. So where we are in the process currently, uh, it's before you folks for uh, planning commission approval, hopefully this evening. Um, and then we're hoping uh, that with those, those approvals that um, we can continue uh, with a construction schedule that would begin sometime at the end of April. So um, with all of that, I think we're under our 10 minutes, Mayor. I think we did well. Uh, with that, <laughs> uh, with that uh, we're able to answer any questions. Okay. We'll now open it up to the public for any comment. Does anyone in front of the public like to wish to speak? Okay, seeing none, we will now close public comment. And we will open it up to the commission for questions. Starting here on my left, Mr. Chapaka. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I got a couple, uh, just for the record, comments. What is the budget here for the <clears throat> capital investment? Uh, the capital investment is just under 70 million. Has that changed since we've been looking at this for the past 15 months of the current economic situation and construction industry climate? Um, it's actually changed, uh, I wouldn't say because of the construction climate, it's actually changed more because of the qualities and the, and the improvements that we've been able to make inside of the building, uh, needing to make it, uh, uh, bring the building up to an essential services um, functional standpoint, right? We're doing more demolition inside of the building, which then is recognizing um, some sustainability efforts internal to the building, like all the lighting, as an example, are, are being taken out of the building. So. Um, the program has increased slightly because of some of the design qualities and then also some of the uh, opportunity costs are being recognized, um, are being recognized inside of this particular uh, design versus what we had originally envisioned when we looked at 825 and chose to purchase it. Thank you. The uh, next question I have is the uh, senior center. Uh, since we're moving three departments over there, <clears throat> is there a square footage increase for the senior center? Yeah, so the, the senior center, all there's there's a significant increase in square footages across all three uh, major major areas there. But the senior center increases um, by about 300 times its functional area, right? So when you take the functional area and the programming space that we have available to us today, um, this space increases about by th by about 300 times. They'll have a complete demo kitchen inside of this particular facility. They'll have 150. Uh, uh, capacity banquet seating uh, for 150 guests inside of the multi-purpose facility. Uh, they have a dedicated art room that uh, is able to hold two kilns as an example. Uh, they'll have a social space internal to in, internal for them to do their uh, their puzzles and their book reading clubs and uh, any other functional type areas uh, inside of the building. And then also uh, which shouldn't be uh, shortchanged in any way, shape, or form, but adequate storage for many of the um, items, if you would, that, that, that are required to run the senior center. And those types of qualities obviously exist throughout the building, not just in the senior center. And the community, the senior communities, has a show sign of favor for this project? Uh, we have had multiple presentations before the uh, <clears throat> the senior advisory committee uh, and then also to the senior the senior membership. Um, obviously, with any changes like this and, and, and changes in programming and functionality, um, I think there's always a little bit of trepidation. Uh, there's unknowns in this. Uh, we've had those same qualities, you know, with our own city staff, I think, largely. Um, I don't want to put any words in their mouth, obviously. I think they're largely in favor of the increased space and the quality of the space and those types of things. There's some reservations about things like um, parking and, and, and how adjacent it is to the building or not. Um, obviously, right now, currently, they're in a facility right now that, that they have 100% access to uh, all by themselves, right? So in this particular facility, there's a little bit more interaction with the public, so there's a little bit of trepidation there, I would say. But largely, I would say that it has been received favorably, yes. All right, and Kevin, the last question I have is, uh, what's happening to the buildings that are here? Uh, so that is something that obviously needs, needs, uh, needs decided. There's uh, a few different trains of thought as it relates to that. Uh, I think we all know uh, what some of those are, but obviously, uh, you know, just run through them, you know, quickly. There's, uh, well, I think there's probably just two. I just held up three fingers. I think there's two. One is, one is uh, <clears throat> in partnership with the parcel next door. If there's, a, if there's an opportunity there, we're not quite sure that there is or there isn't. 
um, and then the other is some some level of um, development on this particular property that um, the city would like to um, <clears throat> control a little bit tighter than just you know selling it off and having X built kind of thing by by any private developer. So the, is there an option to tear this, all these buildings down here, the two buildings, or leave them so that the school system could use it? Uh, I think all options are on the Options. table at this particular point. Thanks for putting that on the record. Mr. Chair, no more questions? Mr. Hicks? Come here, Mr. Greenberg? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a couple questions. Uh, first, uh, my, my usual questions about dumpsters is uh, important. Are you, are you going to be enclosing the dumpster? Yes, sir. Okay, so what's, what's going to be enclosing it, a brick? Or? I'm assuming that it's the same qualities that you see on the on the facade of the back facade of the building it would it, it would be brick yes okay so I, I know you moved the dumpster so that the truck could get in easily but is is the uh, dumpster going to be oriented so that the truck can pull straight in and lift yes okay great uh, just asking about the stormwater retention pond that's right next to it mm-hmm uh, so you're going to have to go five feet more into the back there. Uh, is there any issues with uh, the retention pond? Do you have to make any adjustments so that it can manage the uh, flow of stormwater coming off the parking areas and the roof? So if I know, if I remember correctly, that detention facility actually does not serve for, for stormwater for our particular site. That serves for anything, uh, what would I think would be east. Uh, east of the site, so that actually that corner is actually raised up a little bit from from the site itself. Uh, our stormwater management happens uh, through the new bioswales on the front, but then on the large swell off the back side of the building. And we drain basically uh, everything north of Tech Center Drive, Tech Center Drive stormwater wise drains um, south into our stormwater management system, and then out out of the swale that's behind our building. There are some adjustments that are being made. Uh, not necessarily in pipe size, but in the um, in the ability for the drainage swale to actually uh, improve water quality as it exits the swale um, and heads uh, I'm not to the water body uh, further west. Okay, my third question has to do with the food waste program that has already been established. Is uh, any recycling outside the building and food waste going to be? Uh, where you have the containers in the park, uh, going to be continued over to Tech Center Drive? Yeah, so there has been some conversation about uh, this becoming a second um, food waste drop-off site. I don't know that any final decisions have been made on that. I think that there has been, uh, that has been met, I think, with a little bit of mixed reaction as to um, it becoming a second site. I think through further conversation, I think that there's definitely the possibility there. Um, exactly where would it go? I would imagine that it would go right around that dumpster enclosure someplace because that seems to make logical sense. Um, so those opportunities are still being explored. Uh, those opportunities are still being explored. And I, I know we don't deal with the inside of the buildings, sure. but is there going to be recycling inside the, Absolutely. the facility? Yes, yes sir. Great. Uh, we have even talked about, um, you know, how we put, we, you and I have talked about this specifically offline. Uh, you know, how we put those auditing type measures in to make sure that folks that are cleaning our buildings and that staff are properly using the blue barrels and that that material is actually being recycled as opposed to, uh, you know, maybe just being put with the regular waste. Great. Thank you. I have one more question. It's for Chief Spence. I'm going to make him, make him work a little bit here. <laughs> I'm usually his representative. Oh, okay. Well, whoever wants to answer it, I just wanted to know what the new state. <laughs> Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, state I do. Uh, Jeffrey Spence, Chief of Police, and I live 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 460 Rocky Fork Boulevard. <laughs> Thank you. The question I have is, are there different safety features over at the new tech center area versus what you have here? And what, what has been, you know, what, what are the features that we'll see out at the tech center area facility? 
I mean, the short answer is uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> you know, first and foremost, our, our building is not uh, in our current configuration here at 460 Rocky Fork Boulevard and City Hall. It is configured in no way um, as a public safety facility. It, it, it was never constructed. Uh, we're talking windows, doors, roof. Um, Gehanna, and I was just at an EMA me meeting earlier today, Gehanna has no shelter space anywhere that meets FEMA standards um, in, in any of our facilities, not, not just government, but uh, whether we're looking at churches, schools, uh, this will meet, there will be storm shelter capacity. Uh, the building itself will be able to serve us. We've, we've at times had to evacuate our building, uh, which causes a real problem if you're trying to call 911. Um, so this, this uh, provides us not only from, from uh, mad made, but it also allows a, a level of protection for our employees, for our equipment, for our operations. Um, you know, not too long ago, we had a teacher strike. Um, and while that strike was, you know, an exercise in First Amendment rights, it did impact our ability uh, to respond in a, fa in a fast and efficient manner from our own building because we had we had people you know uh, continuing to walk through the facility and through the parking lots again um, certainly a, a permissible activity but it did hamper our ability to deliver services uh, out, out into the community that's just one example um, so in short this will provide us everything we need uh, to operate in a modern um, and an advanced uh, public safety role but also be able to provide those services uh, to the public and, and actually have a space in Gahanna that's fully, fully on generator, all of those things that, that we need for continuity of operations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That thank concludes you. my questions. Thank you. Mr. Seriano? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a few questions. Um, we touched a little bit on parking, and Michael, you noted, Mr. Blackford noted that um, parking at the current um, in, in, in this facility is high, you know, high, high demand. Um, so we're adding a good bit of spaces, 149, is that right? Um, and I'm just curious, if, do we expect parking demand to increase at the new facility? I, so I think uh, from a public standpoint, no, I don't believe that we expect uh, the public demand on our resources to increase very much at all. Um, I think obviously staffing levels, staffing levels could you know go up and down. I think um, you know when we talk about those, some of those things, you know, when we look at PD as an example, right? They have those eight to ten officers on 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 shift, but it's three different shifts. Um, the way in which the parking lots are segregated, the fact that right now you arguably can complete for a public compete for a public safety parking spot, right? All of those spaces are now moved. Mm -hmm. All of our fleet vehicles are now moved into a secured parking location. Staff is in a in a dedicated location. Um, so no, we we think that the the while the reductions in in parking were necessary, we don't believe that they have a negative impact on on our ability to operate effectively. Okay, great. Um, these are, these are going to be kind of nerdy questions, but um, what is the percentage of glazing on the existing structure? Do we know that? Nerd, nerdy questions go to, go to Mr. Hall and Mr. Santiago. <laughs> on the back side. I, I mean, I think 30% is the, is, the, is the minimum, I guess. I'm just curious about uh, that office space on the back side. Um, so the 30% is the if minimum. You could, real quick. If you could, uh, Keith yeah. Hall, 215 West Cherry Street. Um, the glazing on the backside, the, the minimum requirement for the glazing on the backside is 30%. I would venture to guess, and this is, this is a little bit of a swag, but I would venture to guess we're probably somewhere around 25%, maybe yeah. down to 20 even on the back. I mean, guessing it looks, it looks close. That's why I was, yeah. I was curious. Yeah. I don't think we're that far off. We haven't done that specific analysis. Okay. So. Um, okay. Um, and then I just had one more question about materials. It looks like we have a canopy out front and most of the, we're mostly looking at masonry, stone, um, uh, sandwich panels, yeah. um, and curtain wall on the canopy. Is that a, is that a true 
uh, walnut on the underside? No, that is a synthetic material. Okay. In fact, we're we're looking at a uh, kind of a metal version of that. That you know where they etch and print yep. right onto the metal tubing. Okay, got it. So. Okay, those are my questions. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tamarkin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A um, couple questions. On the east side, you talked about a gate to secure what I assume will be the city vehicles. Uh, so the police vehicles will be to the west and a secure gate. And it's, it's hard to tell in the drawing where the gate's going to be. Is it going to be where that line is, Mr. Blackford, there, if you can put the pointer maybe there, down to the next line? Which, uh, sorry. Um, are we on the, the east side of the property? Yeah, right, right it there. Would be, yeah, it would be right, right here is where the... The gate is on the east side of the It's going to be a security gate. Yes, sir. So the parking spaces above that gate, if the gate's shut, you kind of come to a dead end. So we're also near the senior center. Now, I just became a senior, so I won't knock seniors. But you can end up going down that row, either of the two rows, and find that there's no parking spaces, and now you're trapped. You see, you kind of got to, you're either going to have to back up and now you got to make a little less turn going backwards until you can get your car straight up. Is this appropriate? So I guess my question is, should we take out three or four more spaces there and make it, you know, so that you can loop around? I hate to cost you four more spaces. But it looks, it looks to me like uh, if the gate is shut, I don't know what the plan is, how often the gate's open, how often the gate's shut. The gate but even if shut the gate's open... It, yeah. You know, I guess if the gate's open, you got to come all the way down to the end and loop around. But if the gate's shut, you got a problem. We can uh, we can look at potentially eliminating those four more spaces. I think it would be four. Uh, right now, I think we're only losing two. Is that correct? One on each side. Uh, we're only losing two. Um, but we can we can we can look at potentially making that uh, making egress a little bit easier to, to to circulate throughout the parking lot there. Yeah, I think that that might make some sense to me. Then. Kind of on the same vein, you know, I know where you have the dumpster. Looks like it's easy in and out, but I'll question if it is. So, you know, a trash truck comes in, and for him to get out, he also has to navigate going backwards that S turn <clears throat> near the senior center, near parking spots. I think if we were to eliminate those four parking spots, it would make his, uh, his traverse in the parking lot a little bit easier as well. As long as, again, I'm not an expert, as long as a truck could make that turn. Correct. Obviously. Someone yes. would have to engineer that. Yes. It knows more about truck radiuses than I do. Okay, so the, the, both those things kind of concern me. You know, the other question is, does it make sense to move the dumpster into that little wide? Mr. Blackford, will you move your cursor to the left? Keep going, keep going, keep going. Now go up. Maybe right in there. Would that... That is, there's, so that's, uh, there's three doors on the back side of the building there in the, in the new arrangement. There's a door for the, uh, the water room or the utility room off the far north corner there. And then there's uh, a vestibule that enters into the, into the kitchen for catering staff. And then there's actually a rear entrance for the senior center off the back side there. So I don't believe the dumpster in that particular location would be practical. Would not work. Correct. And let me ask the same question. Does the senior center get food deliveries or food brought in by the volunteers cooking that day? You know, do trucks show up bringing food like they would in a restaurant? They don't. Well, I, no, I believe, I believe, I'm not 100% sure of the answer to that question. I mean, they all, deliveries are going to happen at the building all, all, all the time, whether they, they happen off the front of the building, off the back of the building. But not necessarily to that door, to that Not necessarily doors. to that door, correct. So the, the gate itself, right, so the gate will have an intercom and the intercom uh, and dispatch folks will have the ability to pop the gate and let a delivery driver, a FedEx truck, a UPS truck. Maybe we're having a large uh, training and there's catering that's required to either come in the back or, or they'll be told where they need to go. Obviously, they can even drop packages off through the front and there's facilities off the front secure portion of the building for a, a delivery driver to come in uh, and, drop, and drop stuff off as well. Okay. So I'm going to end it here. I think I'll, I'll put it back in your hands. You know, think through the engineering of these, this little ingress, egress parking area, the trash truck. Sure. Again, I don't think you want that trash truck backing up that close to the senior center to get to that, back out to that exit. Um, question about the trees. 
You're asking for a variance to reduce the tree size from three inches to one and a half, which I'm not a tree guy, I don't have a lot of an opinion on that. But I guess the question is, are we setting a bad precedent? You know, someone else is gonna come in here where we're gonna demand a three inch tree. And, you know, we're gonna give the city a variance for a one inch tree. So I guess the question is, why doesn't a three inch tree work? And if it doesn't work, why does our code require a three inch tree? Let me look at my tree expert here, Mr. Blackford. Um, just from a, a code standpoint in variance history, it is a, a common one. And I'll tell you that the reality of what gets planted is very different than what code requirements are. You might see a future application or something to try to rectify some of those things. It, it's, it's a frequently, somewhat frequently asked variance and different plantings, even though they're, they're trees, different sections of code have different planting requirements. And uh, some of those planting requirements are one and a half caliper inch. So I cannot tell you why this section says three inches and several others say one and a half. It's probably just the age of code and different when they're the same type of plantings and that. So similar variances have been granted and uh, most of our other code sections actually allow for the one and a half caliper inch or it just defers to the subject matter expert, which would be like our, our city forester to make an appropriate decision. So I know in this case, there was some back and forth between the applicant and our uh, parks team on what the appropriate size and what the appropriate plantings are. Um, and, and parks did not have an issue, um, which they do sometimes, but not in this particular case, with uh, uh, reducing that down to one and a half inches. And I'm fine with one and a half inches. I'm a little more nervous about setting a, a precedent for future Rightfully so. Totally understand. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, those extend my questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tamarkin. <clears throat> so I have just a few, uh, few quick questions. The uh, sidewalk that's going to be out in, uh, along the Tech Center Drive, is that going to be um, similar to what's out there existing now? Because that, it doesn't seem like it's a sidewalk. It looks more like a, a multi-use path. Is that, I believe is that it's not? a multi-use path and not a, and not a, a six-foot multi-use path and not a sidewalk, and not a concrete sidewalk. Okay. So it's going to be similar to what's out there existing now, correct? Correct. On okay. the north, on the north, yes, the north side of Texas. North side. Yep. And I know that it seems like that right currently right now it's kind of a I don't want to say a dead spot, but you you kind of. I'm sorry. It, the brick color. I didn't hear you. It seems like right right now existing out there. There's uh, there's really nothing out there in front of the um, the builder right now. So this this is going to provide some connectivity, correct? Correct. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's trees along Tech Center at, at the at the moment, but those trees are coming out for them to make use for the multi-use path. Okay. Very good. Um, could you uh, elaborate a little bit more about the the bioretention swale that's going to be in front of there, just the the structure and function of of that uh, uh, that feature? Uh, so th that that feature. So the. The capacity of the site with all of the the, the stormwater needs to. Um, we had to improve, we had to increase and then improve the water quality uh, requirements uh, for, the site, for the site itself. Um, so instead of doing underground storage and those types of things, uh, they chose to make improvements to the back drainage swale and then also, in, uh, also incorporate the two bio swales at the front side of the building uh, in order to, to improve capacity and then no longer allow, which I believe code allows for, but, but store inside of the parking lot up to a foot of water in, in very heavy events. Uh, this, this plan with the two bioretention swales at the front side and then with the improvements to the drainage swale off the back side of the building eliminates the need to store, uh, store inside of the parking lot, which even goes on outside here, um, which obviously is a problem when you have, you know, um, a nice. lot of money and police crews are sitting in the parking lot that can flood up to a, a foot on quote unquote on purpose. So this, right. this plan here addresses those things and then improves water quality as it leaves the site as well. Okay. Um, next question, uh, keep along the, the theme of stormwater. Notice that on the, I guess it'd be the Southwest corner, it looks like that there's gonna be, um, the building's gonna go over uh, a storm easement. Is that correct? It's gonna go over? A storm, a storm there's, a, there's a 20 foot storm easement. Yes, correct. Any concerns about that? Um, that storm easement is being vacated. Okay. Yeah. 
So all the water is being collected. The bioswales are basically a, a filtration system to improve the water quality and go into the existing swale that's in the back of the building. That existing swale is being modified to some degree to take on the additional um, drainage that we have on the site. Okay. The, yeah. yeah, it was just when I was looking at the plans, I s saw your, your point of, you know, a structure over um, a stormwater easement is yeah. not, not, not the best thing in the world. Yes. So if it's, yeah. be, if it's being that's vacated, being, that's, that's, that's being, good. Yeah. Okay, uh, final question. Uh, I think I had asked this at a workshop, but there's going to be signage at the corner of uh, Morrison and Tech Center Drive saying City Hall this way. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's future. But yes, yeah. that is in the plans to, you know, we got to get people into the site and direct them back to the building. There'll be signage at the, you know, at the front of our building and everything. So, um, and, but quite frankly, this building's going to be distinctively different than the other buildings in the, in the neighborhood. And so I think people will intuitively also be able to kind of figure out where to go to with reinforced with signage. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, so part of... Part of what's actually, it's an addendum to MSA scope, right? But it's, uh, we have a project that's a different capital project, but it's to look at gateway signs mm -hmm. uh, throughout the city so that they are all of unique, uh, unique but similar character. Um, so that there are opportunities potentially to, to work uh, at the corner of, I think you said Tech Center and Morrison, right? Which mm -hmm. is, is That's further off of the site, but how do we, how do we, you know, how does somebody at Morse, uh, Morse and Hamilton, how do they know how to get to Creekside, right? So that type of project is going to address some of those, those needs and concerns from a gateway standpoint, but then a wayfinding standpoint, uh, and we would take into the consideration uh, those improvements for this particular site as well. Okay, very good. Again, the, really the concern is just that, you know, what, when this all comes to fruition and we have a, a new place built, where, where, where'd City Hall go? So just want to make sure that people can, Correct. Get, people can find us. <laughs> They will, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions from the commission member? All right, well, hearing none, we'll now close the public comment. Um, so uh, moving on to start the uh, voting pattern. So we'll begin with the variance. I think in the, for the uh, sake of time, if there's no objections, we'll lump all the variances into uh, to one motion. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the uh, Variance application number V-0005-2024. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Shapaka. Do we have a second? Second, Suriano. Second by Mr. Suriano. Any discussion on the motion? Um, I'm, in, oh. I'm in favor of uh, variance approval. Um, I, think, um, I think this was noted in the, in the presentation, but... Um, uh, general, I, I'll make some general comments too. Um, I think the you know the buildings meeting the spirit of um, of the criteria, especially with regard to the um, uh, I, I guess to the to the disconnect from code relative to to facade. I I, I personally am very uh, impressed with the transformation of this building. I don't know how we have four of the same buildings um, in in this area of Gehenna. So, um, but I I, I really am. Uh, it, it's kind of striking the transformation, um, and I think this kind of more than adequately meets um, I think what we're trying to do in, in terms of uh, you know getting getting the building daylight. Um, uh, also, just given some of the comments on parking and and uh, the increase in general, uh, without an increase in demand, I'm in support of the parking variance. And um, as Mr. Blackford noted, um, the 1.5 to, to, to three inch tree caliper, um, I don't think is, is critical. So um, I'm, I'm in favor. Okay. Mr. Markin? Yeah, I agree with Mr. Suriano. I think it's a great job done by everybody here. It's gonna be a beautiful building and certainly a very nice upgrade. The, uh, the facade, it's interesting, you know, that we do need the variances for that, but it, uh, yeah, it was very well thought out and very well focused, so I will certainly be in support. Mr. Hicks? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hopefully my voice will last through the comments here. Um, I agree with my colleagues that this project is uh, definitely going to be an improvement to the services that we offer uh, our community. Um, I'm excited to see it move forward. Um, we learned uh, a couple years ago and it was discussed at the workshop for this project, that governmental entities really don't need to go through this process. 
Uh, so I would like to say that I appreciate that this, uh, the administration didn't take that shortcut. And it gave the opportunity for the public to have some visibility into this project. Um, the opportunity for the public to comment, not that we had a lot of that, but the opportunity was there. So definitely appreciate that. Um, the last uh, comment, kudos to Mr. Blackford for working the word fenestration in this presentation. And that's all my comments. I'll be, I'll be in support of the project. Yep, and I also want to make a quick comment. Um, I am fully in support of this. I think that this is going to be a real um, source of civic pride, um, not only for, the, for the, the staff members, but the community at large. And, you know, there is also going to be a lot of people from outside of the city who are going to be coming in and out of this facility. And I think that, again, I think this is going to be a, just a real source of, uh, again, community pride and, you know, us showcasing uh, Gahanna, you know, why we, you know, live here and think it's such a great place. So, um, again, just hats off, I think, uh, to, to the administration. Uh, this is uh, it's a beautiful looking building. Um, I know working in municipal government that, um, Having a having a nice uh, place to to come and work it it, it means a lot. So um, again, I'm uh, in full support of this. So here are other comments. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Shapaka. Yes. Siriano. Yes. Mako. Yes. Tamarkin. Yes. Greenberg. Yes. Hicks. Yes. Motion passes. Do we have a motion to approve FDP dash zero 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 four dash two zero two four? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the final development plan application number FDP-0004-2024. We have a motion by Mr. Shapaka. Do we have a second? Second, Suriano. We have a second by Mrs. Suriano. Any discussion? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Shapaka? Yes. Suriano? Yes. Greenberg? Yes. Hicks? Yes. Mako? Yes. Tamarkin? Yes. Motion passes. And then finally, do we have a motion to approve DR-0002024? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. To finish out the trifecta, I would like to give a approval for motion for the design review application number DR-0005-2024. We have a motion by Mr. Shapaka. Is there a second? Second, Suriano. Second by Mr. Suriano. Any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chair. I would just like to say that I'm definitely in favor of this uh, application. Uh, the only thing that I would really like to see is if they can make a deal with the building to the west and put this a little bit on a corner. But since we can't have that, we will certainly gratefully accept this application. In the uh, overall design review, I, I think MSA did a, a really good job on that. Uh, as an architect, I was kind of surprised myself at the, the complexity in the design. It, it looks good. The material selections are good. All the decisions are, were made were <clears throat> very thoughtful. And it, it shows in the volume and the mass and how you spread it out. Uh, good job. Good job. OK. Seeing other comments, clerk, please call the roll. Shapaka? Yeah. Siriano? Yes. Tamarkin? Yes. Greenberg? Yes. Hicks? Yes. Mako? Yes. Motion passes. All right, next agenda item, unfinished business. Don't believe we have any. Any new business? Seeing none, we'll move on to official reports. Assistant City Attorney? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Planning Commission, for doing your part to move this project on. I have been assured that my office is not in the lobby of the new building, so I'm looking forward to it. Very good. Director of Planning? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. A few items here, just real quick. I, I know uh, Senior Director Schultz uh, mentioned this, I believe, but uh, there's been you know, other activities outside of Planning Commission related to 825. I would uh, suspect some uh, construction activities related to demolition and things to be occurring in the next uh, month or so. 
for those of you who are interested, our next meeting looks like it's going to be a small one. Uh, one item, it looks like a, a variance application. Um, Sheets is um, um, probably, you know, late April, first meeting in May, it looks like, is maybe when they're going to be ready. Uh, for hearing lots of other items in review, but they're all just kind of stalled out. So uh, hopefully we should be having a, a large agenda here uh, shortly. So thank you. Council liaison. A couple items, uh, update on the uh, zoning code. Uh, the zoning code's been talked, uh, I think, every Monday, essentially, or, or almost since... Uh, uh, went through planning commission. There's been some discussion on a, a few changes. I'll just quickly update you on what those are. Uh, by far and away, the, the main topic of discussion uh, with the com community or with council has been accessory dwelling units, ADUs. It's been a little bit back and forth. Uh, planning commission saw it, uh, was very much in favor of that language. Uh, a little bit of maybe concern uh, from some folks about putting some limitations on there. It was talked about maybe limiting uh, the ADU to owner-occupied and also uh, of the primary and, and family members. Uh, we left in the owner-occupied requirement, uh, but it doesn't have to be a, a family member in the ADU. Um, and again, that's kind of to address some of the mass rentals of, of properties where somebody's renting out the main unit then building an accessory dwelling unit to really kind of get more uh, rentals out of that. Uh, also, uh, council this week, we uh, 825 is just the topic of the week. There was some uh, agenda item there with the construction bids and contracts related to, to that. Also, uh, this Monday, uh, Burns and Scalo, we saw that uh, application planning commission approved it uh, two weeks ago. Uh, they do have a tax abatement uh, um, uh, before uh, city council that I think will be voted on uh, next week. Uh, I didn't wrap up the zoning code uh, discussion. I was so eager to talk to you about 825 and Burns and Scallow. But uh, this, uh, uh, it's no joke, but on April 1st, April Fool's Day, there should be a vote, uh, hopefully, on the um, uh, zoning code. So very exciting. If that does get voted uh, on uh, Monday, Again, that would be about a month before it becomes effective, and it'll probably be a couple of months before we start seeing the applications uh, subject to that code. And with that, I'll shut up. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you again uh, for your, your input, your insights. Uh, I'm always impressed by Planning Commission. Um, and the way you, you conduct yourselves, but especially to, re to be on this receiving end of your comments uh, and to hear the questions that you ask. Uh, very informative, very educational for us. I know we have a few things we'll, we'll go on uh, and talk about, but uh, thank you very much and your support means everything. Uh, thank you to the team that's here with us, Director Blackford with his very thorough presentation. He's been a crucial member uh, of the team on 825. I mentioned Director Schultz, Director Vollmer, uh, our, our invaluable team from MSA, uh, and and Director Schultz mentioned uh, Director Farrell, as well as uh, Amanda Parker, uh, our Director of Courts, uh, and our Council. Uh, so the, the participation that we've had, this truly has been a collaborative effort, and we're very excited to take this next step forward. And the other, other comment I would make is I hope that you will join us uh, tomorrow evening, State of Our City. Uh, will be from 5 to 7 p.m. tomorrow at La Navona. Uh, a little bit different format this year. It is uh, a little bit less formal. Nobody needs to listen to me speak for 45 minutes, even though it probably feels like that right now. Um, but it is, uh, stop laughing, Director Blackford. Uh, there will be a video showing 2023 highlights, uh, but then really an opportunity to engage with every single one of our departments, uh, every one of our directors, members of their staff. Uh, our council will have a table. Our city attorney will have a table. We have community organizations. It's really an opportunity for residents to come in and talk with them, the people who work for them every day, in terms and talk about what projects are coming up in 2024 and beyond, uh, to get to know the people who work for you. So hope you can make it. Uh, again, runs from 5 to 7 tomorrow. Open house, pop in and out as, as you see fit, and we hope to see you there. And thank you for your service. All right. Thank you. I do not have any, uh, any report to, to add tonight, so we'll go on to the next agenda item, correspondence and actions. No, sir. Next, we'll pull members for comment. Mr. Chicago. Mr. Hicks. Mr. Greenberg. No comment. Mr. Seriano. Yeah, congrats to the, um, to the team. I know um, how hard these projects are, and um, 
uh, collecting all the input. input. Uh, it's an important project for our city and um, just appreciate the time and attention. Mr. Markin? No comment. But the last thing I have is thank you for bearing with me through my, my cold. I've been sniffling and sneezing up here, so uh, tis the season, right? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. We're adjourned.